and welcome to another episode of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from Marty and Danielle in the Mornings on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Paul Segura, brewmaster of Carl Strauss, and we're drinking beer from Carl Strauss today. We're also welcoming Josh, um, head brewer and felt czar for Carl Strauss. Welcome. Cheers. <laughs> So, Paul, I mean, you know, we're drinking your beers, so I'm really going to let you take the helm on this. What are we starting out with? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's our beer. It's a team effort here at Carl Strauss. Um, the first beer that we're starting with is a beer that we call Frank the Bank. Um, it takes its name from the movie uh, Back School came out in 2000. Yeah, it was old school. Old school. Uh, school. Well, <laughs> the local local legend around here, so we made a beer after him. Uh, yeah. So Frank the Tank was his uh, person in the movie, and we loved his character in the movie. There's a lot of great one-liners from that movie. Um, but I mean, we when we made the beer, there was a lot of like Simcoe hops and Columbus hops and stuff. So it had a dank component to the aroma and the flavor and so we're kind of going well what you know it'd be fun to take advantage of that dank thing and in, in the name somehow and frank the dank kind of started organically as the name that right? was surprising it wasn't already taken for sure yeah yeah we stoked on that um the beer itself uh has some dank component but it also has a lot of citrus and tropical notes it's got a fair amount of bitterness. It's like 95 IBUs and it's uh, eight and a half percent ABV. It's dry and crisp, so it drinks like super easy, which makes it kind of a sniper because you don't. Really, it tastes like an ordinary IPA, but after one or two, you're feeling it. Um, you probably be running down the street in your underwear afterwards, like much like Frank. <laughs> we're streaky. We're streaky. The thing that I really like about, I mean, I love many things about this beer, but this beer, as it gets um, a little bit warmer, not quite as cold coming right out of the refrigerator, you get so much more of that hop aroma and hop taste. I think that's true with a lot of beers in general. When they're ice cold, you can't really taste as much of the beer. And then it just... As it warms up gradually, not quite to room temperature, but maybe cellar temperature, they open up like a flower, and then you can taste so much more. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the idea there is that you're muting your palate the colder the glass is. So the more it opens up, the warmer it gets, the more inviting it is, and the real true experience you get through the whole tongue, the nose, etc. cetera. Mm. So this is a beer we've been doing for a couple of years now, maybe more. Three, yeah, four, yeah, about three, four years. It's been in the works for a good five, six years, though. And I know they really, that name was something that the, some of the former staff were really cut, wanted that one to get done. They wanted that name out there. They wanted it, Carl Strauss to trademark it, et cetera. So we just had to throw a proper beer behind it, and the name was already there. But if you went through a little bit of a facelift about a year ago, it used to be like 80 IBUs and 8.3 ABV, and now it's up to the gravity a little bit, and the bitterness is now, like, popping in this beer. And we're, I think we've got to a place where we're pretty stoked it's, on it. It's pretty, it's pretty popular amongst our IPAs, for sure. The double IPA is still a fan favorite of a lot of restaurant people. They want to come in, eat the food, and have a high-alcohol beer. And where can we get uh, Frank the Dank? Because I feel like I've never seen it in bottles or cans at the grocery store. We did one brief game of it earlier during COVID. Um, uh -huh. for, for the most part, until lately, yeah, just draft only um, at the restaurants um, or at your local pubs. I know that occasionally, sometimes they'll be on tap at other locations across the county. Yeah, we put it into 16 ounce like silver cans and then we hand labeled it. That was a fun process. That I'm pretty wow. sure. Again, but. So yeah, when we bring that back, it's going to have you know a nicer presentation. 
Well, and I think that this is a really good time to bring up the fact that the restaurants for Carl Strauss are still open. They're open for takeout. Um, I saw you guys do uh, delivery in some areas also, and then there are the patios to sit at as well. So, you know, as we're getting into the holiday season, especially in this just weird year that we have had, um, this is the time of year that it is best that you go directly to the source and get these beers and get food and definitely help out the uh, local restaurants because, my gosh, if I don't get those buffalo wings and the mac and cheese from Carl Strauss, I just don't know what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> They got rid of fat pretzel bites, though, so we're going to have to put out an open call, Carl. Fat pretzel bites. <laughs> we're, we're pretty stoked that a lot of our locations are like in areas where there's a small parking lot adjacent to them, and we can take over a bunch of parking spaces and put, you know, umbrellas up and tables and stuff, or just take old barrels that we had beer in and put them out there and you know, let people still come enjoy fresh beer at the source. Yeah, the, the restaurant managers and staff did a really great job of keeping things afloat during COVID and really strapping down and making a new model that's really just, everybody's just, it's new I and mean, we don't know where we're going. So for the restaurants to really step up, made our jobs easier down here to just keep brewing beer, keep the yeast healthy. And, uh, you know, it's a we're happy to transition into 2021 with our heads of Above water, at least. For sure. Our tasting room in our PV location, and unfortunately, we had to like close this down temporarily. But we've converted this into sort of a large brewer's office where we can make <laughs> uh, from each other. We're we're kind of about four feet or so right now. We work um, closely but, together. Um, yeah, we've been working together since March. Uh, just. To a small group of brewers continue to make you know beer here and um not slowing down that's for sure despite the lack of staff we definitely want to keep pushing forward in this time so we're excited to be here to be talking about these beers with you there's another yeah, brewer sure. hey, mike do you want to get on camera real quick we got another brewer mike over here he's just going to pop his face in real quick hi mike <laughs> <laughs> Mike's been holding it down with the rest of us. Uh, we've got a pretty solid crew we're stoked on. So uh, well, we're moving on to the next beer. Yeah. Shall we go into the Christmas beer? I get so excited for the Christmas beer every year. Um, I want to say that the first time that I had the uh, Christmas beer with you, Paul, was the Tortugas. And then every year we've had something new. What year was Tortugas? That was the second of uh, the 12 beers of Christmas. We're now on the 11th. Um, so that was nine years ago, Danielle. Have we known each other that long? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. I had it without you. Probably was uh, pre, pre with you. I, no, we might have been together. We've known each other quite a long time now. Um, it's been a, a minute. We've had a lot of beers together. A couple shows here and there. But <laughs> uh, beer... Um, we're pretty stoked on. I'll let Josh tell you more about it. So it's an imperial red ale. Um, hence it's nice ruby color. Got those Cabernet grapes that uh, Danielle's showing off there. And the name itself is 11. This goes to 11. One goes to 11 because of the uh, obvious reference to Spinal Tap there, which we love. And I'm sure being on a radio program, it's even more appreciated by your audience here than other <laughs> But us personally, like, I've only been here for four years, so I've only got to see four versions of our holiday beer, but it's a really special process where we dedicated a whole decade to making a beer once a year to match the song of the 12 days of Christmas. And we're at 11 right now and 12 next year, and I'm not really sure if we're going to 13 or back down. <laughs> I really enjoy the we aged it on French oaks, so that's really where we're taking a twist from it just being a typical red ale um we use yeah, the, the french oak chips for probably two days we aged it on and if, if we had a really good time adding the ruby cabernet grapes and then it just came out to this whole really nice 
good flavored beer that paired perfect with my Thanksgiving dinner last week. Oh yeah. It it kind of matches the season, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like um, the French oak gives it this woodsy character. Um, French oak is like really assertive. It's more than American oak, which is typically like toasty and graham cracker. This has this really sort of pungent, you know, woodsy, almost pine-like thing, almost like we dipped a Christmas tree in the brew kettle or something. Good <laughs> <laughs> uh, holiday beer should taste like the holidays for sure. And this is but it's also like really jammy, like jelly. It's got this grape thing in there that the, um, the grapes really complement the French oak well, and I think that's where a wine drinker would be more open to a drink like this. It really opens up the palate and this one especially, you'd like to sit that one out for a couple minutes before you crack it open and really get the proper flavor profile out of it. So most of the beers in this holiday series were designed to, to be laid down. Um, in fact, when we first started brewing these, we're like, okay, let's try to, there's 12 beers in a case and there's 12 years in the series. So we encourage people to buy a whole case of each year and then each year, break a bottle out and do like a vertical tasting. So at the end of the 12 years, you're on your last bottle of the first vintage, which was carrot in a palm tree. Then it was two tortugas. And then it was uh, three, what was three? Was I made, I made out of the <laughs> legal, age, uh, legal drinking age when the first couple. Of so I honestly don't know. <laughs> I my still have a bottle of each year that I break it out with my like in-laws at Christmas time. And it's been pretty fun. Um, but asking 12 years of age from a beer is asking a lot. But I'm pretty happy to say that as of last year, all the each year is like held up pretty well. And they, you know, some of them have gotten to taste a lot better over the years. I think this year's vintage in another year or two or three, maybe longer is going to taste even better. I think that French oak flavor is going to kind of mellow out and get more rounded with the beer itself. That's it. Paul, which is your favorite year? Oh, man. There's been a lot of fun ones. Uh, Five Wee Heavy Bells was a fun one. That was the scotch on scotch. We made a scotch ale. And we aged it in scotch barrels. Um, it was a Wee Heavy, a Scottish Wee Heavy. Oh, yeah, we remade uh, that year. Parent of Palm Tree was a great one. Two Tortugas won us a bunch of medals. Um, that was a Belgian quadruple. We threw that several times since. I think it was even an anniversary beer where we threw that beer into a barrel. Okay. Oh, three was uh, Mouet à Trois, which was kind of a fruitcake-like beer. Then it was Four Scowling Owls, which was a Belgian triple. And then it was five, like, We Heavy Bells, which was the Scotch on Scotch. And then it was six, um, I can't, and then it was seven, <laughs> yeah, seven Sharks of Circling, uh, Eight Merry Mermen. Oh, yes, that one was so good. <laughs> Every one of them has been, like, super high gravity. Intended to be laid down for a while. And Joey, um, our nine, that, that actually does say this program's helped us gain medals actually. Beyond just the Belgian quad, we did our test batch a couple of years back with the nine bonfires blazing. That would be our golden stout. And we just won a silver at the GABF with that beer this year. So we're really, the holiday series does that tend is, to bring out brilliant Wasn't beers. that one of your beers? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to pick favorites or anything, but I think that the ten beers for breakfast was the best one. But you know, I'm a I'm a little partial to the name. <laughs> That's awesome. But a spiritual and drinking relationship, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the youngster hang out with the old the old timers the <laughs> part of the industry that really you know this is Carl Strauss you know it was, there would not be San Diego beer for if it was not for Carl Strauss you know in this sense we did definitely work him and 
creating these one-offs are definitely some of the better parts of the job, you know? I really enjoyed this year, specifically the holiday year. Uh, one last question for each of you. What is your favorite Carl Strauss beer to brew? Wind and Sea. Oh, you took my answer. <laughs> For real Why wind and seek? Um, it's you know it's just two malts, right? It's two Roman wheat. Uh, it's it's a simple beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of our it's it's the opportunity for the brewers to uh, if you mess up, you'll know. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of room for error with the Hefeweizen. It either tastes clovey and banana-y or You've completely messed up, and it's, it's a chance to really. We only do a small batch of it at a time, and not very often. So it's one of my favorite beers to brew, and I have the most fun with it from 6 a.m. all the way to 1 p.m. Awesome! All right, Paul, your turn. And when it's when it's fresh and good, it's like banana bread right out of the oven. It's, it's amazing. It tastes um, like it. yeah, for sure. Fresh wind and sea off the tank is my favorite. Uh, I kind of like the way the brewery smells when we're making mosaic. Ooh. Uh, it just smells like Fruit Loops. Um, mosaic just, in addition to the citrus component, it has all this like tropical stuff going on and all these different fruits. And I still get blueberry for mosaic, even though you don't. <laughs> oh, that's, that's going to be on your gravestone. And yeah, I get blueberry off mosaic. <laughs> I love mosaic. I just I can't get you know when that beer it's it's fresh also it's just like it's like drinking fruit. Yeah, that's, um, that's the best drinking beer. Yeah, best drinking beer from fresh anytime anywhere. Mosaic from IPA. I can't argue. I cannot argue with either of you on either of those choices. Uh, Paul and Josh from Carl Strauss Brewing, thank you so much for joining me on Beer for Breakfast. Thank you so much for supplying San Diego with some of the best craft beer that is out there for more than 30 years now. And uh, keep going strong. We absolutely love everything that Carl Strauss puts out there. We're coming up on 33 years and we're still living at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I love that. Well, cheers to independently owned craft beer and radio in San Diego. 91X.